Morning guys, um, today, whilst waiting for the um, tracks to arrive for the mini digger, um, I've got Cyril working down in the cave, just cleaning up the stones, uh, ready to be jointed. And I'm, I've am i been getting on with um, parquet in the extension. I've just kind of set it all up. And now I'm gonna show you um, how, how I lay the parquet basically. So you can see, to get it level, I've put little wedges in and and uh, pinned those first ones down. And you can see I've just started getting going on uh, on whizzing back into, uh, basically you have to off offset the joints as much as possible. So you don't have two joints in the same place, if you understand. And um, yeah, it's it's been a bit awkward at the start because this machine here normally has this plastic, um, this plastic bit here sticking quite a bit out at the back, but because we've been riding next to the wall, it's uh, it's been a bit difficult. So it was a bit slow and a bit tedious, but now I think I'm gonna do a little bit of showing you how it's done and then do a bit of a time-lapse. So these are the... Uh, so these are the nails I'm using. Um, they're kind of, uh, um, I can't think of the word, like kind of serrated to, to keep the wood um, in place once you've whacked the nail in. I mean, normally you'd have used a round like, nail that's not conic or anything. This one is, uh, like I say, it keeps it well in once it's been hammered in. So, pop that in there. And this spring keeps the nail up at the front, so um, I can uh, I can keep going without having to push the nails in. It's really important that you close these gaps up here and, uh, and then you're gentle when you hammer the wood because if you're not gentle when you hammer the wood uh, it'll, it'll break the tongue. So that's the system. I'm going to do a, a time lapse now. Before I start the time lapse I just wanted to talk about all these different packets open. It's not because I'm making a mess with them. I'm doing this on purpose so I can I can have all different lengths of parquet going down. <clears throat> and also, when they're delivered, you have all these different lengths. So of course you want to mix them in. Sometimes uh, to get the lines, the joints away from each other, you need a different size size of parquet as well. So if I'm really struggling, I end up using a 30, which is a foot. But generally we're about a meter, um, a yard, uh, sort of 75. They're stamped on the, on the, on the back side of the uh, parquet. It's really good parquet. It's actually Chatagne, uh, which is chestnut. So pretty much, um, <clears throat> pretty much the same as oak. Um, you lay them this way around so you can see the thicker piece before the tongue is up top and the thinner piece underneath and of course the stamps underneath too um, but it's actually finished which makes it so much easier so basically once it's laid first thing we do is give a quick clean and if you want to stain it i generally stain it a medium oak uh, which just gives it a bit of a golden uh, appearance and then uh, and then we uh, give it some varnish on top. By varnishing the parquet as soon as it's down, it protects it from all the plaster, paint and whatnot, and in, and all that comes up quite easy. Um, so basically you don't have to sand through the uh, 
the plaster and everything before you start uh, treating the wood and varnishing it. Um, it's something I learned over the last few years um, that, you know, deal with the wood first and then cleaning up afterwards is a lot easier. Uh, on that note, a lot of people have been asking, am I, how, how come I know so much about building and, and, and you know, how did I learn it all? Uh, basically, at the chateau, um, we've been renovating for almost 20 years. And so, of course, you learn quite a lot. And so, uh, so yeah, I mean, just all, all the stuff I know, I've just picked up as I've gone along. But yeah, it's, uh, it's when you've been working in the in building for, for 20 years, you do pick a lot up. So there we go. keeps you warm this. Um, I've stopped there just for a couple of reasons. Um, I want to talk about why I've left gaps at the side and also uh, the piece I'm on now is quite interesting. So you can see I've left quite big gaps there. Um, a bit lazy of me but at the end of the day you need expansion uh, space. So you can see normally it would be something like that. That's the kind of limit because it's only got a few mil. But in summer, the wood can work. I don't, I'm not too bothered about this hole here because we're putting already the insulation on the wall. And then we've got the rail for the plasterboard, which is probably going to be about here. So you're not going to see that hole. Now, why I stopped on this one is you can see I've got this kind of crack coming in. It's working its way in. And how I get around that is I got a nice long piece and kind of nail it back with that one. So I'm going to wait a second, pop it on the stand, uh, pop the camera on the stand, and you'll see what it looks like after. So of course, same technique, just whacking. type up at this end. So first of all I'm going to nail it in there and then here as I whack this we're going to get as much of this crack out as possible. I've just realized I've got two joints that are fairly close together but the, the choice of having a big crack or having a smaller crack is more important than the two joists, uh, joints being fairly close. I mean they're, they're about an inch apart so it's not as if they're lined up completely. There we go. So the trend of this big crack that was appearing has now gone. You can see it's not gone 100%, but that's fine. The wood will work anyway during its life. Uh, and then, of course, as we carry on, that, that's going to go now. I've had to stop there on, uh, on the parquet because the tracks have arrived. Cyril! So we've got the track next to the mini digger now. I'm just gonna show you in a quick time lapse as getting it on. Basically you pop it on at the front, get it on the sprocket at the back, just on the top, and then you use the actual mini digger to put the rest of the track on, if you know what I mean. So it's a lot less intense than trying to put the, trying to put the um, track all the way on, uh, but especially with it being so heavy. So here goes the time lapse. So there you go, quickly got it on. Um, 
it's a bit harder than normal because it's so tight because it's a new track but let's show you where we're up to and then what we do next so considering it was tight this this bump here is normal because it was in the packaging like that so that was what we put on the front earlier on i just moved the track around so basically all i did looked like a bicycle put it on the first bit of the sprocket and then turned it um i think it was forward or backwards i can't remember now so now we need to get this nice and tight so it means popping the grease nipple back in there and pumping it up real quick job so I'll pop the grease point back in and all we do now is pump it up with grease. So we're going to pop the grease gun on there. It's going to push that wheel away from uh, the digger. So that way. Yeah. And it's just going to tighten this chain up. Now I need it so that it's off this plate here. But when I push it, it kind of uh, wobbles down, touches it and comes back up. So that's the kind of tension I need on it. So we've got it nice and tight, off the back, touching at the front. It looks about right underneath. It's a bit hard when uh, it's a bit disformed as it is with this one. It's kind of been bent like that for a while. So uh, we're gonna change the other one and then I can get on using the mini digger. After a little bit of uh, heavy lifting, the tracks are on. So let's see what it looks like. There we go. Tracks as good as new. Well, new. I'm ready to get going. So thank you everybody that uh, helped us with those for buying a coffee. It was really kind of you. And let's get this earth back before Anna gets here later on. Just arrived in Vienna with my little boo boo. She's having a little snack. We're gonna go and check what daddy has been up to, aren't we, Emma? Yeah. Oh, I can hear daddy. So, just arrived in Vienna, and guess what? Ed is obviously on the digger, working with these new tracks that I can't wait to see. Although they, they look, I mean, they look like they've been used already. Let's see what he's up to. Mount Ed is looking beautiful over there. I haven't been here for hours. I would say a good week. I think Ed is flattening the soil that is here, filling up a hole. But what I want what I really want to go and see is what he's been up to inside because it's been ages. Let's go and have a look at that. Full insulation has been done in the little pantry and then Ed has started with the parquet. How fun is this? It is definitely getting on. I can hear him outside on the digger. His favorite toy, you will say. There is one thing that Ed absolutely loves. 
along with this digger, it's the floor. And the fact that it's like almost, I think like, it's gonna sound silly, but like doing, like, it's like it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And like fitting all the pieces and how they fit and this is gonna, I mean, this will look amazing once it's finished. Five minutes I was having a look around inside the things and it's pretty much flattened all this area here. I'm gonna go and have a look at how we're doing at the pool because it's looking completely dry to me. Yes, the pool is dry and the terrace is pretty much cured. I mean, I know the weather hasn't been great, but we haven't had rain. We've had cold and a lot, a lot of fog each day. With Ed starting the parquet, there is something good and positive. That parquet has been in the summer kitchen all this time just like filling up the room so at least it means that that room's gonna bit by bit get emptied and I can't wait to see it without the parquet. Well, let's go and have a look. Oh, we can see where it all was. It was all here and look at it now. Gone. Which means like bit by bit we will be tidying up and like the radiators will move what we're not keeping here is gonna move into storage and then things will advance it might be winter now so not much but i think in like a, a month and a half time this will have advanced so much more now let's go and see what ed is up to Same there with cereal. Oh, he's trying to get rid of soil. On peut dire c'est pour amener au château de ou non? Euh, tout le. Ouais. Non, il va le. Ah. Okay, so cereal. Là, au fond. Ok. So Cyril is just telling me that all that soil there that Ed is taking away to clear up the path here is to, to put that towards the end here. Oh, there I can see it. To put towards the end here so it can like raise the level. Okay, yes, I can see it. There is where it's gonna go. Maybe a cold winter's day, but work is carrying on. How is it going on the mini digger, Ed? Oh, it's a dream with these new tracks. Are you in heaven? Oh yeah. I've got another problem though. What is that? Run out of diesel. Oh no. No, I just need to go and get some diesel in a tank and bring it back. It's because I've been working so hard on it. You've been having the time of your life on that digger now. Yeah, I've leveled up all outside as well, just quick level. Yes, you have, because it's looking really good. I mean, yeah, I came not... in, it wasn't like this. Yeah, so it's it's kind of getting there. I think the uh, I think I'm going to have to work towards getting everything cleared because I'm not going to be able to start on that until. All yeah. this is done because the machine needs to come in through the gates mm -hmm. and it won't go over my concrete because the concrete's not going to be thick enough for a heavy machine like that. No. So the next stage will be clearing this? Yeah, I think so. Well, the thing is, we've got a load of um, travertine coming now. So I think, is it this week? 
starting this week maybe or starting the start next week i've got 23 pallets to bring in and put on on the concrete over there mm -hmm. so yeah um i've got that to do as well outside so yeah i can hear cyril in the cave yeah. but i won't go and check on him because i bet it's all dusty and thing it yeah. is dusty um, but he's getting there now so oh, that's good um, we're going to be pouring concrete down there soon ah oh. so well, I'm going to put some lights in down there as well. That I, I oh yeah, that sounds good. That. So yeah, about seven or eight lights down there, up lights onto the stone. Well, that's going to look really good. Mm. Can be a nice little area for, obviously, storing wine, but then... Yeah, have a little table down there and chairs. Yeah. Man cave. A lit oh yeah, man cave. A literal man cave, yeah. That is definitely a man cave. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, so I'm going to whip out, get some diesel and try and get the rest of that area where we're going to put the drive in get mm -hmm. that cleared up and then i need to get on with doing drains again I dig know. another drain in i know well i'm gonna go for charles i know i haven't been here long because you need to continue and you got the van and i got yeah. the car so i got the van and i've got cyril keep yeah. him keep him here while whilst he's here the last couple of weeks that he's <laughs> here keep him here morning <laughs> noon and night <laughs> right i'll see you later see you later bye